Okay, so um, I've read the uh, post-death warrant 3.851 motion filed on behalf of uh, Mr. Owen entitled Fourth Successive Motion to Vacate Judgment of Conviction and Sentence of Death. And I've also read the state's response in opposition uh, to that motion. And based on the arguments advanced in those two submissions, I find that no evidentiary hearing is necessary or warranted <clears throat> an appearance of Mr. Owen before this court is not required. I will issue a written order to that effect this afternoon so that the Department of Corrections is advised that they will not be transporting Mr. Owen to this courthouse tomorrow. I'm likewise quite comfortable in determining the, uh, the three additional motions made on Mr. Be uh, Mr. Owen's behalf concerning competency, diagnostic scans, and stay of execution exclusively on the written submissions. However, if either side feels it necessary to reiterate any of those arguments that they've already made in their written submissions, I will give both sides a few minutes within which to do that today. So let me start uh, with um, Mr. Uh, Owen's team. Lisa Ducero on behalf of Mr. Owen. Um, and just to verify, you don't want me to address anything in the fourth successive motion, just the other motions. Well, I don't need you to address any of the four motions, frankly, because I've read them all and I've seen the responses by the state in opposition to all four. Um, but if you want to give, uh, you know, spend a little time, uh, you know, advancing those arguments again, taking into consideration the fact that I've already read the motions and the responses, and I've been looking at this case, giving it the uh, the expedited handling that I've been instructed by the Supreme Court to do since uh, last weekend. Um, so I feel fairly confident in my ability to be able to rule based on the written submissions. Okay. Um, well, the main thing I'd like to address would be the motion for determination of competency to proceed because sure. I believe that's the most important motion that we have um, because that affects everything else um, being that it's with all of his fixed delusions mm -hmm. and he keeps debating on certain things, it's very hard to actually communicate about trying to do the case and trying to do everything under warrant in this accelerated process. So, you know, it's hard to determine, is there other newly discovered evidence that maybe we need his input for? And I feel like there likely is, but without being able to communicate with him properly about all of that based on his um, severe mental illness and his schizophrenia and the fact that he doesn't really want to talk about you know the things we need to talk about in this posture it really becomes very difficult and we really feel like since everything has been declining and we feel he's incompetent to proceed based on dr eisenstein's report and the fact that he had also said that he is incompetent to be executed we really feel like more experts need to determine what is going on with his competency and i feel like we really need to go forward with that side of things so that would be my biggest argument um, i know the state has um, brought up some case law but i feel like if we do deny giving him all of um, um, giving him the determination and for his competency. In essence, we're almost making a blanket statement saying that if you're in a warrant posture, that it doesn't matter whether you're competent to proceed or not. So, and the case law doesn't say that, and neither does the rule. All right, so I'll give you a few minutes. How much time do you need to do that? Again, I, I, once again, just so the record is crystal clear on this point, I have read the motion already, and I've read the uh, the uh, legal authority cited in the motion, and I've read the response that I got last night from, uh, from the state on that uh, response to that particular motion as well. So um, uh, I'm prepared to, to uh, make a decision. And I'm not saying, by the way, that I'm going to announce that right now. I want to uh, digest all of it carefully, and, and uh, I will, my plan is to uh, issue or to render orders based on the uh, or determining all four of the motions uh, uh, as quickly as I can in accordance with the Supreme Court's mandate, but um, in no event later than three o'clock tomorrow because that is my deadline, the deadline imposed upon me by the Supreme Court. So I don't know if that makes it any clearer for you. I'm not going to, I'm, 
bottom line is I'm not going to rule from the bench, but I will hear additional argument if you feel it's necessary. Um, Your Honor, that, that was uh, most of the argument right there. Um, we stand on our pleadings, but it just in the case that that was not clear in the motion. Okay. I just wanted to gotcha. just make that note that competency is a huge deal, and I of think course. that you should appoint the act. Of course, it's a huge deal. All right, uh, for the state, Ms. Torrenti, go ahead. And then, Just briefly, Your Honor. There you go. Uh, and for the record, make sure you announce who you are. Yes, sir. Celia Terenzi on behalf of the Attorney General's Office. I would only add that simply because this case is under a death warrant with an execution pending doesn't mean the uh, case law or the rules of procedure do not apply to Mr. Owen or to this motion. That's all I have to say. All right. Very well. Thank you. Okay, so uh, then hearing nothing else, I will render written orders as I've already indicated just a moment ago, as quickly as I can, but in no event uh, will the last order come out of my office uh, after 3 o'clock p.m. tomorrow. I will have ruled on all four motions uh, uh, before that so that I am in compliance with the Supreme Court's order. Um, so if there's nothing else, and I have nothing else, I can tell you that, if there's nothing else from any of you, uh, I'm prepared to uh, adjourn for the day, at least in the courtroom. We've got plenty more to do. All right, all right, hearing nothing, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you, folks.